Good morning. It's Henry and Mowers and Blowers again. This is the Mikasa multi-quip tamperer that I got from uh, Walter from Serve Brothers. Wanted me to fix it, but as you can see, it runs, but it smokes like you wouldn't believe. And it's all coming from this area right there. I disconnected the low oil sensor. The oil is pouring out of there. I'm gonna have to shut it off. I mean, oil is just pouring out of there, you know? I'm thinking maybe, uh, because look, um, I thought it was the head gasket, right? I mean, oil is just pouring out of there, you know? Um, however, my friend uh, Five Speed Ash says, you know, it's very unusual for um, the head gasket to be blown on this because it's um, metal. So, if it's not that, then what could it be? Um, it's burning oil so bad and leaking oil so bad right around this area that um, the oil sensor probably shuts it off after it, you know, runs for a little bit, you know. And so um, I disconnected the wire to the oil sensor so it will run, right, regardless of the level of oil, which of course is dangerous for an, an engine to not have that sensor connected. However, just for testing purposes, you know, disconnect it just to see if, uh, to rule out the fact that it's another issue, other than the fact that it's just pouring oil out of here. Um, while I was trying to fix this yesterday, or get it running perfectly, you know, which it was for a little while, it's, even though it still smoked, um, as you recall, uh, look, this tamperer is basically a vibrating machine, and it vibrates its whole life, you know what I mean? So it's not unusual for these bolts to vibrate loose, you know, they should lock tight that stuff, but that bolt right over there was loose, right? And then when I was running this, this bolt is loose, and I can't tighten it without grabbing onto the bottom part, which is difficult to do, right? So now I'm thinking, maybe the head bolts are loose, if the head bolts were loose, right, that would cause it to uh, leak oil out of there, right? So if one bolt is loose, maybe another bolt is loose. So what I'm thinking is maybe I should uh, remove the muffler and the head and, uh, or at least get to the head bolts, right? And see if they're tight and torqued down. If they're not, it's probably caught, that's what's causing the leak, you know? So I'd like to actually find out what the problem is with the leak here. Um, Five Speed Ash also has a uh, Honda engine, a, a GX160, identical to this one, but with no recoil starter. Well, if I could just get that engine and put the old recoil starter on, there you go, right? <clears throat> also, I have another uh, idea. We could. Um, some people have said on the comments that I could, I could go to Harbor Freight Tools and buy the Predator engine. I think it's only ninety-nine dollars, right? And then we'll put it on and uh, good to go. So I cleared it with uh, Walter. Um, he's good with either because he needs this for next year. And so um, since we're, you know, probably going to get another engine for this, I'm going to tear into this and see where that oil is coming from and why it's leaking. Mailbag. Uh, late last night, UPS guy came my uh, Lucas Oil resupply. Thanks again to Lucas Oil products. Uh, today I was going to start working on my Troy built uh, lawn tractor. I know a lot of you guys like uh, when I work on tractors instead of uh, other different equipment. But um, I feel that, you know, I should be more well-rounded and basically do videos of every machine that comes to me, you know. Um, I'll get to it, but, you know, right now in queue, I, I got to figure out this uh, tamper first, right? So, um, I need to do a, a ton to, to this thing because, A, I, I've got this drive belt here that's busted, right? I'm going to pull it out and uh, so I can measure and see. 
easy for me to say. So I can measure and see um, Jesus. what size belt that I need. Um, believe it or not, this actually came with a battery, which I was pretty surprised at. Nick never gives me a battery. Um, so I just tested the uh, with a multimeter the voltage. It was like 1.5. Um, the switch was on, so it didn't have a key. I put a key in there, um, and it, it was, you know, it's been drained, you know. So now I'm recharging it. Uh, rear tires actually hold air. Fronts don't. And I, and I know that the um, solenoid is probably in the back in front of the battery. That's where MTD puts it, you know, so which is a pain in the butt. And so I'll have to, after the battery's charged, put an engine on there. See if it starts up. Remember, that's the en the engine I'm going to put on here is this one. It has a uh, new piston and rings in it, and this will be the test to see if that's the problem. A lot of people said that if you saw the piston and rings moving around with your hands, then the uh, engine block is warped or out of bore or out of specs over thirty thousandths, and um, engine's done. So if that's the case, I'll just strip this engine for the parts and uh, probably keep it for another application or something like that. But then I'll n need to find another engine for this thing. So I'm going to remove the muffler now. This is 12 millimeter. It holds the muffler. Muffler bolts are usually very difficult to take off because there's, they're always rusted or corroded. And, uh, so far so good, it's one down. I'm going slow so I don't strip anything. I've got a 10 millimeter over here for the one that holds it on the bracket. Okay, let's see the muffler. It should be kind of hot. Inconclusive as to what's going on here because you can't see anything, you know. I guess I'm gonna just take this shroud off too. Since we're probably going to get a new engine for this anyway, why not try to see what's wrong with this, you know? It's attached to a uh, thing over there. i got to remove the entire uh, engine cover to get this part off, so I'm just going to bend it out of place. I'm just going to drop it down like that. I don't know what the hell that is. By the way, I just checked the Earl. It has used up a lot of oil. It, is, uh, it, it, it definitely needs oil, so don't let me run this without putting some more oil in. So, uh, here is the... Um, Here's the head bolts right there. I have to find a bolt to see what size that is so I can see if it's loose or tight. So, um, 
I've inspected it with a flashlight very closely and uh, five speed ash was right. It is not a blown head gasket. You know why? Because the head gasket is actually on this layer right here. And there's absolutely no evidence of any oil leakage from the head gasket, okay? So the head gasket, I could see a piece of it right there. It's metal sticking out on this layer. The layer that has the most oil drippage is from here, okay? And it's obviously just coming from the muffler out, you know? And uh, as you can see, the oil residue here, right? Even though this gasket to the muffler is seems to be good, oil is, is, has seeped out from in here. So guess what? It's the piston and rings, right? Because oil, the only way oil goes through here is through the piston ring leakage, you know? Which means that the um, either the piston or the rings or the cylinder wall is scored badly that it seeps through there, you know? So you know what? I'm just gonna take the head off and find out for sure because that's where it seems like it's coming from all the oil is going into the muffler that's where the evidence is the wet oil it's in the muffler means disassembly of the entire carburetor too. Air cleaner base cover everything. Ring nut to the cover to another nut to the washer onto the air cleaner. Yeah, I'll just disassemble it. You guys have seen me do this. Okay taken the uh, air cleaner off and um, disconnected the boot from the, the spark plug and now I'm going to take the throttle assembly off um, and it looks like it's just this bolt here and that bolt there to get to that bolt you'd have to move this throttle forward so that that's clear Now to get to this bolt, this is clear. Throttle assembly comes right off. Just gonna hook it on here, let it hang there for a minute. Now this part is open, so I'm going to take off the valve cover. And because the valve cover is, there's a head bolt there, a head bolt there, right? Uh, but the other two are inside the valve cover. So I'll take the valve cover off. Strip them. I'm gonna have to use a wrench. Last bolt was removed. I'm taking off the valve cover now. And I have saved the gasket. See access to the head bolts right there. I'm gonna now remove the head bolts, 12 millimeter socket. Goes on pretty tight, I will say. This is gonna be difficult to get to. I have to shorten this.
Okay, the two top ones are out. I'll have to make this longer. It's not going to get in here without me moving this whole thing. And this is high torque bolts. So I'm just going to get an, uh, a wrench. Got a ratchet and socket. Looks like I'm going to be able to pull this head off. And check out the situation. I believe all this is loose. I'm gonna pull the head off now. Are you ready? What is holding this on? Ah, oh, throttle. Oh, and the fuel line. I have to get. I have to disconnect the fuel line. I disconnected the fuel line. I got it clamped off. Here we go. And there be the head. And just like you said, gasket is metal. Gasket is metal. And look at all that oil right there that shouldn't be there look how dirty this uh, thing is unless I just did that did I just do that man there's a lot of oil in there too lots of oil in here too let me get this to top dead center that oil build up right there. You guys see that? You guys see the movement there? See the movement? Look at this movement. You see that? This engine is Dunsky. Just like the engine I'm about to put on that Troy build because that does this too. Which means I'm gonna have oil leakage coming out and it'll be a waste of my time. So, now I know, with all this movement, there's just too much seepage here. I'm surprised you even have compression to start, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> well, that's it. We have confirmed the diagnosis, is that the piston and rings are Dunsky. There's a better angle for you guys. See that? All right, so watch. Um, I'm gonna try something. So I'm gonna clean this up, all right?
I'm gonna pull it and see uh, how much oil leakage. Cylinder feels smooth too. It's weird. Oh, there are some there are some grooves right here, some scoring. You can feel it with my fingernail. When you're running the fingernail, it's not smooth. It has ridges. Yeah. There's some scoring here. Very light though. For the most part, it's pretty smooth. Here's the uh, head. Look at how much uh, carbon buildup is built up here. I'm gonna actually put this back uh, just for just for fun, you know. Um, I don't want to leave it, you know, disassembled like this, you know. It does run. It just smokes. A lot and leaks Earl but uh, this is the condition of it you know um, you guys are saying or at least uh, some of you guys are saying if that if that piston wobbles then it's uh, past 30 thousandths of an air gap in the um, specifications and it's just too great of a um, gap and uh, well, you still have compression, right? It's going to leak fluid past the rings and cause it to smoke badly. So, I guess if we reboard it, right, and um, got new rings, oversized rings, it would probably work. Maybe not because the piston is still that size, right? Bore is bigger, so you're gonna it's going to wobble even more, you know. So that's not worth it to do, especially since you can go buy a uh, Predator engine for $99. And that's why people buy Predator engines, because it's only $99. Uh, I think that's what we're going to end up doing, in, unless um, 5-Speed Ash has a better deal um, for Walter. Um, I'll have Walter come by and pick up an engine from you. Uh, I think you said that you had a couple or bunch, multiple pieces, but they all have no recoil starter. Well, I could just use this recoil starter, right? I just need the engine. So I'll have Walter go see um, Spice Speed Ash pick up an engine, and then we'll just swap it, you know? And then I'll just charge Walter for the labor is all. Uh, he's in it for like a hundred bucks already from all this work. That's why I don't like working on other people's stuff, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I'm doing all this work, right? It's not even mine, you know? That's how I feel. I can't even sell this for money, you know? So all this work for, what, a couple hundred bucks in labor? It's not worth it. I don't know how you guys do it. pretty quickly actually uh, it was pretty easy and uh, it runs I'm, I'm getting better at this stuff huh uh, so this engine's done ski and uh, I'll have to get another engine for this Hello.
is a home light weed eater 26 SS weed whacker my friend uh, Larry from Larry Bob found it on the street and gave it to me let me see if it starts up full choke this looks like it's in good condition almost new carburetor feels good primer bulb you know when you when you push it it has that uh, feel of gas going through with no bubbles and stuff feels good rot a little bit so now you put it to half Feels like a lot of uh, very no like feels like no compression. I think it needs to just be adjusted with this. The, the uh, fuel adjustment. With this high low fuel adjustment tool, it's not spline, but it has like one little thing that you can't see. That's what fits into this one. Just needed an adjustment. This is a Craftsman 25cc uh, one um, that I got from uh, Bob and Larry also. Uh, this one starts sometimes but it looks like the uh, fuel filter is off the fuel line and the fuel line looks uh, short so it's having difficulty sucking fuel into the uh, carburetor. Also I think the carburetor is probably dirty but uh, I did, it did run for a little while until it uh, bogged out. I just poured the fuel out and as you can see the filter is inside along with this thing. I'm gonna get a new fuel line. So I changed the fuel line and put the uh, filter back on and also filled up the gas and it still won't start. 
So unfortunately this one's going to be a little bit more that I need to do. Not every job is, not every piece of equipment that I get is super easy, you know what I mean? Sometimes you gotta work at it. I'll take the carburetor off and clean out the diaphragms. So that's why it's not starting. Crap in there. Contact cleaner, Lucas Oil Products. Ding! There you go! Good as new! See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel by a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on the next ball. Have a great day. Hey guys, Boba and I want to thank you for all the support of Mowers and Blowers. If you'd like, make a short video clip like these, and I'll put it as an outro in my future videos. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers!